Today we're going to visit and explore Plaza de Armas, which is right behind me. But uh, first, I'm going to try this uh, sandwich, which I got at a little cafe right next to uh, Plaza de Armas. And a coffee. And I'm told that this is like a typical uh, late breakfast or like a lunch, I guess. I don't know, for, for uh, Chile. So it's very typical. If there are any Chilenos in the comments, let me know. Is this typical? Is this like a typical breakfast? Late breakfast? Who knows? Anyway, come along. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. So we're out here in Plaza de Armas. Plaza de Armas. It was, of course, commissioned by this guy right here, Pedro de Valdivia. Pedro de Valdivia, Spanish conquistador, who we uh, spoke about in our last video about Santa Lucia Hill. There's a famous SDGO Santiago sign. And Plaza de Armas, of course, as we all know, named after famous actress Ana de Armas. Which is kind of strange because, I mean, the plaza is, is quite old. You know, they, the Spanish arrived here in like 1541. And uh, she was born in like the 1980s, so it's weird that they would name it after her. I don't even think she's from Chile. I think she's from like Cuba or something. But anyway, good for her. She's getting her name out there. She was really good in uh, Knives Out. If you haven't seen it, you should check that movie out. Really good. Anyway, also around here, there is uh, a lot of very cool old architecture. Now, one of the things about this plaza, as I've been looking into it, is a lot of this architecture it's not like as old as you think it is. A lot of it was sort of rebuilt. Like, and a lot of these, uh, these buildings, they're serving a function different from what they, uh, originally, they were originally uh, like for, right? So like, this is the Museum of National History, but this wasn't always the Museum of National History. And next to it over there is the old post office, uh, which was not always the post office. And over here is the Catedral, Catedral Metropolitana de Santiago. Big, beautiful cathedral, which also not as old as you would think. You know, when they, I always keep saying when the Spanish show up somewhere, they plant down the uh, plaza and they start building a church. And they did, but it wasn't this church. This is actually like the fourth or fifth church that was built on this plaza. And this was built in like the 1700s. So uh, I think the first thing we should do is maybe we'll go inside and check out and see what's, what, what the church looks like inside. What do you think? Let's do it. Let's go, let's go take a look real quick. I bet it's really beautiful in there. As you can see, a lot of people out here in this big, beautiful plaza. 
enjoying the day. It is a very, very nice day today. Um, it's been kind of hot recently, of course, because it's summer, but it is getting a lot cooler. And today is really, really beautiful day. Nice and breezy, uh, warm sun, cool breeze. Very nice, great day to come out and enjoy the outdoors. And there are a lot of people here in the plaza doing that. So this building, the post office, Correo Central. This is an actual post office. You can go in there and mail a letter if you want to, but this wasn't always a post office. Uh, originally, this actually, this site right here where this building is, was like the original, original founding spot, basically, where Pedro de Valdivia planted the flag. And uh, they built like the governor's palace, where like the governors of, uh, of the uh, captaincy of Chile, basically, would, would stay, the top dog uh, during Spanish colonial era. And then after uh, Chilean independence, for a while, for maybe like two or three decades, this is where the president lived also. Not in this building specifically, because there was a fire and the building burnt down and then they had to like rebuild it in the late 1800s. But up until 1846, in this spot was the building where, uh, where the presidents would live. They moved that building now over to uh, a couple of metro stops away from over here, over in a place called La Moneda. And we're gonna see that in, uh, in another video for sure. Moneda, but I think we should try and go check out that building too. We'll go inside. I mean, I know it's just a post office, but it's a really nice building. I bet you it looks pretty cool inside. So let's go in and see what we can see. As you can probably tell by now, they didn't let me film inside there. I started to film and uh, security guard said I couldn't film in there. So, But I, do, I was able to take some pictures. They let me take a couple pictures inside. So I'm sure I put those in the video and you got to see what they looked like. It's very cool. Right next to this uh, is the Museo Historico Nacional, the National Historical Museum of, uh, of Chile. And this museum, we're going to get to go in there. Maybe not in this video. I think that'll be for a future video. We'll go in and we'll check out that museum because I'm sure there is a lot of cool stuff to see in there. Um, but this building also was not always the National Historical Museum. Also here in the plaza, there is the Indigenous Peoples Monument, a monument to the uh, the indigenous people, the Mapuche, who were here before the Spanish. And the uh, the Mapuche actually were part of uh, the Incan Empire because before this was Spanish uh, imperial territory, the Incan Empire uh, from Peru had uh, had territory here, and actually. During the 20th century, there's been a lot of study and a lot of research has revealed that this was likely actually an Incan settlement, a major Incan settlement, and that the plaza here was the center of that Incan settlement. And when the Spanish arrived, they just planted their plaza on top of the Incan plaza. Also here in the plaza, on the south side of the plaza, there's this large building. It takes up basically the entire south side. It's the Portal Fernandez Concha which is, uh, is a big shopping mall, actually. And this actually, I think, since it was built in the, uh, I wanna say 1700s? No, it, maybe 1800s? Either way, when it was built, it was it has always been sort of a commercial center where shops and markets have been. So you can go in there and do some shopping while you're here on the plaza. And of course, if you do some shopping here on the plaza, everything's gonna be kind of expensive. I showed that, uh, that breakfast that we had, the typical uh, Chilean breakfast, and uh, it was pretty good. Um, and, I, and I've been told that that is the typical Chilean breakfast, that it's like, uh, like a sort of a steak sandwich like that with a coffee. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, it was pretty expensive also. And I think that's probably just because either we're in this very touristy area and we went to a cafe that's like right next to Plaza de Armas, so the prices are higher. Either that, I just got charged the gringo price. And if that's the case, then 
you know, it is what it is. But anyway, there is uh, plenty of spots around here where you can do some shopping. It's also, in addition to uh, that market there, a lot of the streets around here are uh, like pedestrian market streets. You can walk through and there's just shops lining all the streets. And here, there's like a lot of street vendor stalls that are set up where people are selling uh, different things, art, gifts, and things like that. You can get your caricature taken here, of course, and it's an artist selling some landscapes, some portraits. You can buy all kinds of stuff right here. Right here in Plaza de Armas. Right here in the center of Plaza de Armas is the uh, monument of Latin American freedom. And on top, there's a picture of a woman, it's like a sculpture of a woman breaking the chains of uh, an indigenous person. So there's some symbolism there, if you want to read into it. It looks like there's a little plaque on here that said it is uh, dedicated to the glory of Simon Bolivar. So there it is, right in the center, in this big fountain. And this actually was, uh, was something different before. I, when I was doing the research, I read that that statue used to be like a, a different, like a bronze statue um, that was on top of the fountain. And I guess that actually got moved over to La Moneda when they moved a bunch of stuff over there, including the president. So that's where the president presidential palace is. Of course, we're probably going to do a video about that too. Um, but it got moved over there, and we'll check that out later. And then, last but not least, in this plaza, there's uh, this building that's here next to the historical museum, and back out by the uh, Pedro de Valdivia statue where we started. This building is like the municipal building of, uh, of Santiago. It's like the Santiago Town City Hall where, uh, you know, you go and get City Hall stuff done. Uh, but this actually used to be the, the site of the uh, Cal Calvido, um, which is like the Spanish colonial council, where they would make decisions for the, for the colony. It was also the jail. Like I mentioned before, a lot of things in this area are not the original constructions from the 1500s. Back in the 15 1600s, this was the jail in the ca ca bil ca Cabildo, the Cabildo, and um, it was torn down, and then it was rebuilt, and then it was burnt down in a fire, unfortunately, and it was rebuilt again in like the late 1800s, and that's the building that there is now, and that's the, uh, that's the city hall, Santiago City Hall. In the early Spanish colonial days, this whole plaza this whole plaza would have served as like a market where all the goods from different parts of the Spanish colonies and the Spanish Empire here in the Americas, they would come in here and they would be sold in here to the people uh, of the city of Santiago. And of course, right in the middle, they had gallows where they would hang people. Any criminals who, uh, you know, went against, broke the law and challenged the crown. Anyway, you know, they were big law and order types here, I guess. So yeah, they would hang people right there in the middle and, uh, you know, scare everybody else into, like, following the law because you don't want to end up, you don't want to end up in the middle being hung, you know, and hanging out there while everybody else is around, you know, shopping for spices and whatnot. Kind of a morbid thought, but it is what it is. That's how they did it back in the, uh, Spanish colonial empire days. Anyway, I think we should uh, take a look down some of these uh, these side streets because like I said, down in some of these areas, there's like uh, pedestrian walks where you can, uh, you can buy stuff. And uh, I think that's sort of part of the, uh, part of the charm of the, the plaza as well. Like there's a lot of foot traffic through here. A lot of people can come through and uh, you can do some shopping around here. So let's go check some of those out. Right here down one of these little side streets, this little alley like down uh, next to the plaza. So it's really interesting. You see this like neoclassical architecture right here. And it's attached to a building that's like 1960s or so, I'm guessing, brutalist architecture, which frankly I think is one of the most, like the ugliest architectural styles. And then right next to it, of course, more neoclassical 
this building here is like actually the other side of this building is basically right on the plaza. And uh, this is something I've seen, I've seen kind of a lot here, in Santiago. There's a lot of uh, neoclassical architecture like this that looks like it's from the like you know, I don't know, late mid to late 1800s. And then there's also a lot of that like brutalist architecture from the uh, from the 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s that era. It's all mixed in together. Makes for a really really interesting. Uh, city view when you're walking around the city but uh, luckily it's not all brutalist architecture and you get some of the really nice neoclassical stuff in there too anyway so we're here down one of these little side alleys and uh, down this little side alley like I said there's a lot of cafes restaurants shops lots of stuff around the around the plaza to do and see places to uh, spend your spend your pesos this walk right here is like right next to the uh, Portal uh, Portal uh, Fern Fernandez Concha that like shopping mall area on the south side of the plaza and you can see there's a ton of street vendors along here everybody's selling stuff now the interesting thing is like this is not just a typical like thing that you see in uh, this area because it's a touristy area. I mean, most touristy areas like this, you see a lot of street vendors like this. But in in like all around Santiago, in different places I've seen, there's people out selling street vendors like hustling. It's, it's really a lot more than I saw when I was in like Argentina, for example. Of course, we did see people selling stuff in Argentina for sure. I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't like there weren't. Mostly socks, actually, honestly. But those people, they would like, they'd be selling on the trains. And uh, it's actually, I noticed a sign here on the metro that said it's illegal to sell stuff on the trains. It's also illegal to buy stuff from people on the trains. Although I have seen a few people like walking through the trains selling water, um, which is pretty nice actually because a lot of the trains I've been on here so far have not been air conditioned. Either that or the air conditioning was like broken or something. And the uh, stations also, the metro stations, not air conditioned. And like I mentioned, it's cooler today than it has been recently, but man, recently, riding around on the metro, and it's like, you go down to the metro station, it's like 90 degrees down there, and real stuffy. And you get on the train, it's, it's packed with people, it's like 100 degrees, super stuffy. Really nice to have someone come along and sell you some nice cold water. But, like I was saying, in Argentina, didn't see a lot of uh, like street vendors. There were some, You'd see some in places, but like around here, man, like everywhere. Like I, uh, I got off at a stop, a few metro stops away, that actually had like a big supermarket or like a like a hipermercado, more like, you know, like uh, almost like a Walmart. In fact, I think the brand it was a uh, it was a lighter store, which I think is actually owned by Walmart. But anyway, I had to go there and pick up some stuff, and like right outside, there were like. I don't know, 30 or 40 street vendors selling all kinds of stuff. And uh, mostly like mostly like this guy here, where they just had it spread out on a blanket, and they just be selling it. And I've seen that all over the place. Like, I've seen that just on regular streets in the city, not in like a touristy area, not in like a high foot traffic area, but just like in like a regular street. There'd be a lot of people selling stuff. So I seem, I seem to see more of that around here than I did in Argentina. Like I said, in Argentina you definitely saw it, but it was mostly like on trains, in the train stations, stuff like that, in Buenos Aires specifically. Once I got further out into the smaller cities, like in Mendoza, I hardly saw any of that in Mendoza. But here, man, there's everybody's out. Everybody's out on the street trying to sell stuff, hustling, trying to make those, make those pesos. And of course in the neighborhood surrounding the plaza, there's a lot of other stuff to see here. Uh, right across the street, we're about two blocks away, and right across the street here is the uh, Teatro Municipal de Santiago. The municipal theater is a large theater where they have, you know, orchestra performances, operas, and it's beautiful neoclassical architecture. And like I mentioned before, right across the street, or next to it, Sociedad Nacional de Agricultura. National Society of Agriculture building, which is also like a neoclassical style. There's this building over here, which I'm not sure exactly what it is. Neoclassical something, maybe like a hotel or something. And of course, right next to it, this big 
this big uh, brutalist monstrosity. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's kind of what it's like walking around Santiago. If you want to get a a uh, little just like a little taste of what it's like walking around Santiago, that's it. You look up and you see neoclassical building, neoclassical building, and then you know brutalist monstrosity right across the street. But I don't want to speak ill of the city because it is a really nice city to walk around. It actually is a really beautiful city. And uh, even though there are some of these brutalist buildings mixed in with the neoclassical stuff, that's kind of the way it was in, it's uh, kind of the way it was in a lot of the cities we walked around. It's a lot of, a lot of like, uh, you know, uh, cities, not just in Latin America and not just in South America, but I mean, all over the place. Walk around Washington, DC, capital of the United States, exact same thing. Neoclassical buildings built in like the 1800s, big beautiful ones, and then right next to them, brutalist shit heaps, like the, uh, like the FBI building, J. Edgar Hoover building. That thing is disgusting. Anyway, if anybody here is a fan of like uh, brutalist, 1960s brutalist architecture, well, Sorry, I guess I really pissed you off, but you can complain about it in the comments down below. Anyway, let's head back towards the square, see what we can see on some of these other shopping streets. The whole area around here, lots of little shops, street vendors. This is like just a few blocks away from the plaza. There's always people selling this stuff. Not sure exactly what this stuff is, but uh, we'll have to try it one of these days. People selling fruit over here, different kinds of street food, lots of good stuff. Of course, the whole area very busy with foot traffic during the day. I mean, this is on a weekday. There's a lot of people walking around here even on a weekday. I would imagine on like a weekend, like on a Saturday, I bet you this place is packed even more. Even more people walking around, uh, taking a look, you know, looking at uh, all the stuff there is to buy. Going to see the uh, different tourist sites, things like that. Anyway, it's a really nice place to walk around, especially on a nice day like today. Also, noticed a lot of like street performers, people singing, dancing, playing musical instruments. Very, very lively. I mean, it makes sense, right? It's a big old city. Six and a half million people. Of course, there's gonna be plenty of stuff going on right around the center. Right around the dead center. So here's a guy right here. But of course, right around the center of the city, of course, there's gonna be all kinds of stuff going on. And it is, it's a very, very lively city. I've noticed that about, um, about Santiago. Very, very lively city. Although, one thing I have noticed about Santiago, it seems like, compared to Argentina, it kind of seems like things aren't open as late here. Maybe it's just like the neighborhood where I'm staying, or I don't know, maybe I'm just, maybe it's just like a, I'm not, I'm not going to the right places, but it seems like things close earlier. Um, you know, like in Argentina, I got kind of used to like having dinner at like 10 o'clock at night. And here it seems like people have dinner earlier. And also, in Argentina, where they like close everything in the middle of the day and do like the siesta thing, they don't do that as much here. At least uh, the businesses I've noticed, they don't close in the middle of the day. Uh, at least I haven't seen any that do, um, which is, is different, definitely different. I don't know what I was expecting, you know, I was coming here from Argentina and I kind of like expected that uh, there would be a lot of similarities. And there are, there are some similarities, but there are a lot of differences too. Um, and, and that's, that's cool. I mean, that, that's obviously like one of the best things about traveling around to different countries is figuring out the, the differences, the differences between different countries. Oh, speaking of similarities and differences, here's someone selling mates. Mates, because of course, sherba mate, people do drink it here. Now, it's definitely not as popular as it is in like Argentina. Argentina, sherba mate, super popular. The way I know it's not as popular because when you go to the grocery store here, like Supermercado, there's maybe like one shelf that has sherba mate, or it has like sherba on it. 
next to the tea and next to the coffee. Whereas in like Argentina, they'd have like a whole aisle with 70 or different brands of sherba, like tons and tons of it. So much more popular, I think, in Argentina than it is here in Chile. But I have seen people drinking it here in Chile also. Another thing they have in Chile here that they had in Argentina is Claro. And uh, I don't know if I ever mentioned this, but maybe this would be a good time to talk about it. Let's talk about Claro. And this is going to be for, for uh, not people who you know live in South America. People who live in South America, they know what Claro is. This is going to be strictly for like American and European tourists who are deciding to come here to South America, especially Argentina and Chile. Claro. Claro is like the Verizon, basically, of Chile. They provide, or of uh, South America. They provide um, internet, like you can get fiber internet in your house with it. You can uh, get cell internet, like broadband um, data, cell, like a SIM card. And that's what I've been doing, actually, for my phone. Uh, for people who have like newer phones, you probably get one of those eSIMs. Uh, an eSIM is like a SIM card that's built into the motherboard of your phone, and all you have to do is go online and purchase a data pack from a company and then like register your eSIM with that company and you'll get data coverage no matter where you are. Here's what I was talking about by the way, a little aside, like you're walking along the street here man, people are just out selling. There's just street vendors like everywhere. And yeah, this is kind of close to the uh, Plaza de Armas, but on pretty much like any street man. I see this, I see people just selling tons of street vendors, way more here than I saw when I was in Argentina. But uh, anyway, about Claro, back to Claro. If you're coming here, uh, there's going to be a few different choices for like how you can get broadband internet and data on your phone. And uh, the one that I chose, and the one that I would recommend honestly to everybody here is Claro. because. They have really good coverage and their prices are really good. And when I say really good, like if you're from the United States, um, there are prepaid options for sure in the United States for like data for your cell phone, but their network coverage is usually really bad um, and they're actually pretty expensive, especially compared to like here. Um, in the United States, I feel like there's kind of a stigma around prepaid data. Like if you get a prepaid SIM card, there's a stigma that it's like, it's only for poor people or something like that. And, and basically everybody, uh, most people that get data, they'll have like a package with a contract. They'll sign a contract with Verizon and you'll get, you know, data along with, you know, phone calls and texts. And uh, they're usually really expensive, those contracts. Whereas like a prepaid here, that's kind of how a lot of people do it. You can get a contract for sure, in, uh, in countries like in Argentina and here in Chile. If you want to, you can get a contract. But I don't think a lot of people do. I think a lot of people do prepaid. And as a tourist, you should definitely do prepaid. And when I say it's cheap, I mean it's really, really cheap. When I was in Argentina, I got a Claro prepaid uh, tourist chip. They call it a chip, not a SIM card, but you got one of those. You stick it in your phone. You, act, you basically like turn your phone off and turn it back on and they send you a little text message and then you uh, you dial a number on your phone and it says okay it's activated restart your phone you restart your phone again and boom you've got data and I got a tourist data chip that was like 30 gigs of data it was 30 gigs it was good for 30 days and it cost like five dollars US and when I was done with 30 days and I was getting close to expired I didn't use nearly all like an, I, I didn't use like I probably used 10 gigs in 30 days but the other 20 gigs were about to expire and literally all I did was go on to uh, Claro's website and with a credit card you can like recharge I paid I think about two dollars and fifty cents and I got another 10 gigs plus, uh, like they were running a special. So I also got phone minutes, like a 
500 minutes and 500 text messages for $2.50. So, anybody in the United States who knows about uh, prices for cell phone and uh, data, you know that that's really cheap. So anyway, if you are coming here as a tourist, I think Claro is the way to go. I am not sponsored by Claro, by the way. Uh, I just, uh, I just actually enjoyed their service and it worked quite well for me. Anyway, I'm walking around a little bit and I don't know exactly where we are. So, uh, let's go this way. Another one of the companies you can get a chip from for a SIM card if you're here is Mov Movistar. There's a store right here. And uh, there's another one, or at least there was one in uh, Argentina that was called uh, Flow, I think it was, Flow. And uh, actually in the airport in Argentina, there was a Flow kiosk, but it was closed because I flew on on a Sunday way back when, when we were in Buenos Aires. Anyway, Movistar, that's another option. And uh, I think I chose Claro because when I did the research, they have a stronger network. Like they have big, more network coverage. There were areas where Movistar had like big dead zones across South America, especially in more rural areas. And I didn't really know if I was going to be visiting any rural areas by like getting outside of cities. But if I did, I wanted to make sure that my internet was going to work out there. So I think it was a, uh, it was a good choice getting Claro. And I've been really satisfied with it. Now when I got here to Chile, one of the first things I had to do, of course, get a SIM card for my phone. Because like the second I went across the Alps to uh, like from Argentina, my internet just went like crapped out. And I didn't have any internet. So like right next to the bus station, about a couple blocks away, there's a mall with a Claro store. And I went in there and like I straight up bought a uh, bought a SIM card from like a vending machine in the mall. There's a mall Claro store vending machine inside. I put like a thousand peso bill in it and they gave me a one gigabyte prepaid chip. It lasted for like 10 days and uh, of course you know I can recharge it online with a credit card. Same way. Super easy, super cheap. Definitely the way to go. I think that's gonna be it. I actually got far enough away. But when we were walking talking about Claro and all kinds of other stuff got about six seven blocks away and uh, luckily Right by a metro station. We can hop on the metro and head right back here to Plaza de Armas. And of course, I should mention before we end the video, Plaza de Armas is a combinacion or a transfer for two different metro lines, so it's very easy to get to. Uh, line three, the brown line that runs north, south, and then line five, the green line that runs east and west. There's a big transfer station down, down uh, underneath the plaza. So uh, you can get here very easily. Anyway, I think that's going to be it for the video. I think we saw a good amount. There's a good amount to see here on the plaza. And of course, we're going to be coming back here again for sure in the future because there's more stuff to see, uh, like that Museum of National History. We want to get in there. And uh, there's also, uh, we didn't see it in this video, but there is a like a Museum of Pre-Columbian like art and history, I think. Uh, I'd be interested to see that too. So maybe that'll be another video. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, we will see you next time.